Well, at number 21, the, 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 the genius, Bill Belichick, uh, got this pick from the Broncos. He actually used one of his picks and uh, moved up to pick up uh, Chandler Jones, the defensive end from Syracuse. Uh, his brothers, uh, both well-known. One uh, was in the UFC fighter. Okay. And John Jones. Uh, UFC fighter John Jones. And his brother uh, had another brother who plays with the Ravens. Mm-hmm. So uh, he was a fast riser also. Nobody had even heard of him yeah. a month before the draft. And all of a sudden, in the la- within the last two weeks, he, they, they were saying he might go in the top ten. His brother's reputation definitely helped his stop. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Especially that fight with Rashad Evans the other, oh. the other week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but now, um, Chandler Jones... Uh, he, he looks solid in film. The only, the only problem I have is that he did play for Syracuse. He didn't play the greatest uh, greatest talent. Uh, I feel like players that go to the Patriots have have good have a good supporting cast. You know they, they'll get better. Well, they can go into nowhere but up at thirty one defensively. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, I, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I didn't fall in love with him the way Mike Mayock and the other guys did, and the analysts. He has all the physical. He looks like he looks a defensive end. He looks like a defensive end. Yeah. But the red flags for me were knee injury, knocked him out of five games last year, and he had a total of ten sacks his entire career. And how many years did he play at Syracuse? I, if I'm not mistaken, it was three years. Okay. At Syracuse, so that's an average of three and a half, seconds. something like that. And I mean, I, I, there were there were analysts that were saying that he was a better pick than Copels at number sixteen. They're nuts. Um, <laughs> I, I, I just, nuts. I just feel like you know he was the flavor of the week, and everybody just kind of jumped on that bandwagon. And so of about, course, if Belichick makes the pick, it's it must be genius. I think the draft day hype got the best of the Patriots this time. I mean, you know, I feel like Chandler Jones can be a solid player, but uh, I think I think that he's not as good as people expect him to yeah. be. Well, he, can, he could be very accurate. Is he going to be a defensive end or is he going to be a linebacker? Because he's he's only two sixty six. Well, then he's definitely not going to play defensive end in that scheme. Mm-hmm. Well, does he have the ability? He didn't show me that he had the ability to cover as a linebacker. Mm-hmm. And if you well, anyway. It'll be a project. Yeah, it'll be a project. I think he's a guy that they can take, and you know they can they can train him, they can teach him, you know, show him the ropes. I think Belichick, Belichick is a very good defensive coach. Not in the last few years, but I think with this pick, he he can do something with it. Okay. Well, at number twenty-two, the Browns, they picked up this pick from the Falcons the previous year, and <laughs> they picked up the quarterback from Oklahoma State. Why? Old ass Brandon Whedon. <laughs> wow. Senior citizen from Oklahoma State. They're trying to challenge Colt McCoy. Uh, but the first round pick? They're, the Browns definitely had a lot of greater needs than Brandon Whedon. The, better needs than quarterback. I mean, I don't get it. Like I said, you got Kirk Cousins out there. There's a lot, like you said, Russell Wilson. There's a lot of quarterbacks who aren't that far apart. Mm-hmm. So, it wouldn't be a stretch to wait to the second, third round to get a quarterback. Mm-hmm. And like you said, they got way more pressing needs. Mm. Especially especially on that defense. Even on the offense, they need receiver Yeah, help. who the hell is they throwing the ball to? They need receiver help. I don't, I don't know what Muhammad Masakwa, uh, uh, Chauncey Stuckey. Right? Trent Richardson is their best receiver. Yeah, <laughs> Masakwa and uh, the other receiver you just named are both number threes. But what was the name yeah. of that kid from North Carolina they picked last year? That wide receiver. He was the lead receiver there, wasn't he? They picked him up in the second of the third yeah, round. Yeah, what are you talking about? Yeah. They, they still need receiver help. help. Uh, they yeah. still need receiver help. They need receiver help. I think, I think they can use O-line help. Oh, I think yeah. I thought the catcher would have been a great pick for this team, especially yeah. especially with Trent yeah. Richardson. Yeah. You know, you can, blow, you can blow people off the line, you know, yeah. especially with Joe Thomas on the outside. Yeah. Well, now we get to number 23. Mm. We have the Detroit Lions. Ah. And we're going to let Mr. Scott take this. I'm just going to let you know that they took the offensive tackle from Iowa, Riley Reef. Take it away, Mr. Scott. That is an excellent pick. It is about fucking time, Detroit. 
Because if you would have drafted one more receiver in the first round, <laughs> my head may have exploded. If you look in the past 20 years of Detroit's draft, they've probably taken 12 receivers in the first round. Well, they, they finally got it right. They yeah. finally got it right. <laughs> and I mean, they all right. So, yeah. Riley Reef is great because Jeff Backus is getting old as dirt. And we see what Stafford is when he's healthy. Mm-hmm. So, it's about time somebody in the office said, hey, maybe we should invest in this guy. <laughs> maybe we should protect this guy because the team is nothing without his quarterback. And this is a quarterback-driven league. I love the pick. Uh, he's, he's been working out well so far. You know, his rookie mini camp, T-shirts, you can't really see much, but just as far as his work ethic, they've been, we've been getting real good reports about him being hungry and trying to learn and sticking to the veterans and asking questions. And so I like what I see. Very good pick, Big Ten player, Iowa. Very solid offensive line coach, so uh, I love the pick. Uh, I have no problem with the pick. I know Rife, he's, he's going to get better dealing with that defensive line on the lines and Ooh. practice every day. <laughs> guys like Sue, guys like Fairley, you know, guys like Vandenbaugh, they, they're going to make him better. All right. So I have no problem with that. I don't know how the hell this player was on the board at this point. Yeah. I thought he'd have been gone a long time before. I know the Lions are still smiling over this yes, pick. Yes, uh, I, I saw him as a top 15 pick. The fact that he was there at number 23, it was a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. I, I, I figured they would go either after DeCastro, who went after this, mm-hmm. after this pick, one or the other. So I, they, they were in the catbird seat at that point. Well, we go on to 24, and the Steelers, of course, make an excellent pick. And they have a value pick there. Mr. David DeCastro, the guard from Stanford. Great. Falls great to pick. them somehow. Great pick. Damn, the, the rich Steelers, get richer. The Steelers always get great late picks. <laughs> the rich always. get richer. It, it, uh, I saw it happening once the picks, once the, once the draft started unfolding, I saw it happen. I saw the Castro falling. I felt like the, the old linemen in this draft weren't as good as the ones in, in, in past drafts. Mm-hmm. So so teams weren't really going to take that. Take that yeah, risk, risk Yeah, so. Yeah, but I think the Castro was the best. And right. it seems like a lot of this draft, everybody was concerned about offense. Quarterback, mm-hmm. running back, receiver. You know, you had a, a linebacker here and a cornerback there, but for the most part, the majority of the first 20 picks were dominated by offense. Mm-hmm. So you, you get a lot of these uh, great guys falling. Right. That, yeah, he had no business being that number 24. Oh. The, the Steelers, once again. Once again. You know, rich get richer. I'll say it again. Just added on two more years of Big Ben's career. Shout That's out it. Mike Tomlin. Yeah, really. <laughs> and number 25, the Patriots, uh, they moved up again. They moved up. Uh, uh, they got this pick from the Broncos. And they picked uh, Dante Hightower, the linebacker from Alabama, who I, in my mock, mock draft, I had him going to the Ravens, mm-hmm. who I heard were dying to get him. Yeah. But uh, the Patriots beat him to the punch. Uh, I have I have a, a a spill about these Alabama players in this draft. Mm. I feel that these Alabama players were surrounded by talent in Alabama. Mm. I felt like each of them didn't have to really produce in these situations. I'm not saying these guys aren't great players. You know, they're great players in their own right. Mm-hmm. But I feel that they were how do you say over 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 drafted. They were over scouted. They they. They they were seen as better than they really were because right. of the defensive scheme and the position there. And don't, and don't get me wrong, Nick Saban is a hell of a coach. Yeah, he coached these kids up to to the greatest of his potential, to the greatest of all of their potential. But I don't think that Dante Hightower is, or any of these really Alabama guys, except except maybe uh, Mark Barron, who I think is a solid safety. Mm-hmm. But besides that, I don't think these Alabama players are going to be as good as expected. Right. It's all like I said again. It's the whole Ohio State thing. You got a, this collection of great players. Right. It makes everybody look better until you get separated, mm. and then you have to be accountable. Right. Mm. Then you have to step up. Well, at number twenty-six, the Texans came back and they took uh, Whitney Merciless, one of the best names in the draft. Oh yeah. Defensive end from Illinois. A lot of people were a little bit shaky on on Merciless. Yeah. He kind of dropped a little bit. Yeah, I hope he lives up to the billing. I like Merciless actually. And then you lose Mario Williams and D'Amico Ryan's. Mm-hmm. You gotta, you gotta get some players to replace those that production. And I know Mario Williams was hurting the majority of the season, but I still would have been that easy to give him up. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is this was the replacement for Mario Williams, mm-hmm. another pass rusher off the edge. Yeah. Who, who, if he does learn how to stand up and and, and rush. From a stand-up position, he could be one of the great pass rushers in the NFL. I feel like 
he can do very well. And Wade Phillips will get him right. Wade Phillips is a great defensive coach. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Don't let him be a head coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, at number 27, the Bengals, they got this pick from the Saints through the Pats. And they went for the guard from uh, Wisconsin, Kevin Zeitler. It, it, it's hard to it's hard to grade offensive linemen. Yeah, it really is. So I can't tell you if this was a bad pick or a good pick, but I can tell you that it was a need. Yeah, they do need offensive line help. You know, I felt that if if they could have got the Castro, they should have got him. You know, the Castro was dead number seventeen. They went with the cornerback. You know, and I. Well, see, that's, that's hard to call because you don't want to let a good cornerback go either. Cornerbacks mm-hmm. are, are more far and fewer between than offensive, offensive linemen. linemen yeah. Right. And offensive linemen come down to motivation. Mm-hmm. A guy can be great in college and then he comes in the NFL, gets overweight, gets cut. And, right. And Wisconsin has always put out good old linemen. I've always felt like Wisconsin. Well, the Big Ten usually, when it comes to offensive line, because, you know, as we know, the Big Ten is more geared towards power football right. versus the SEC. ACC is more speed. Mm-hmm. So... I think when you're looking, that's why you see typically a lot more offensive linemen coming from the Big Ten. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, at number 28, uh, we're moving on to Packers. Again, rich get richer. <laughs> they uh, they had a, the defensive end from USC, Nick Perry, fall to them. Woo! So they got to put him on the other side of uh, Clay? Of Clay Matthews. I God. love Nick Perry. I think Nick Perry is going to be legit. And especially with this Packers defense. Packers defense was very, very average last year. But that's, I feel like that's because of the injuries. Yeah, they had a lot of injuries. They had a lot of injuries. Um, that secondary is going to get it together. You got Collins coming back. You know, you got uh, Charles Woodson. You know, Charles Woodson Charles Woodson. You know? He's going to end up going to safety. And yeah. that's going to be even better for him. Mm-hmm. That's going to be even better for him. And then you still got... Uh, what Tremont Williams and they got a, their other cornerback against Sam Williams. Shields. Yeah, Sam Shields. Sam Shields. They have solid. a good secondary, like you said. It's injuries. Injuries. The Packers are going to be just as dangerous as the year they, they won the Super Bowl. They're 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 going to be just fine. Yeah. Um, they're going they're going to be with the Lions and the Bears fighting for that NFC North. Well, that's going to be a hell. Yeah, of I feel bad for the Vikings. <laughs> Oh yeah. I feel bad for yeah. How have I been able to say that? <laughs> I feel bad for Adrian Peterson. He's gonna have to deal with these guys. Oh me? yeah, man. Uh, a- yeah. Oh man, AP's got. I wouldn't let him out the gate till he's extremely healthy. I would hold him back. I really I, I, I'm thinking that AP might be gone in a couple, pretty soon from mm-hmm. now, un- unless the Vikings, you know, make a make a turn for the better. Yeah. Speaking of the Vikings. Well, speak of the Vikings. <laughs> and number twenty nine. As I was saying before, the Ravens, I think the Ravens just got pissed off that Dante Hightower came off the board. And they said, you know what? We're getting the hell out of the first round. And so they traded with the Vikings. And uh, the Vikings picked up uh, the safety from Notre Dame, Harrison Smith. Who? I, 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 I. He, mo- he moved up in the last few weeks. He it moved was up. Second rated safety. Harrison Smith. Um. I, moved I, up big time. Overrated. I, is, 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 is there anything more to say than that? It's just that this guy's a first round pick. Had no business being picked in the first round. Yeah, plenty of guys who could have done better. I think the Vikings the Vikings made a pick that that's not gonna help them. He's not I think if you're gonna pick a safety in the first round, mm-hmm. he needs to be a safety that's gonna be a game changer. Mm-hmm. And I don't see Harrison Smith as a game changer. No, it'll be interesting to see how he fits in their scheme. You know, because their defense is rebuilding. Like I said, outside of Jared Allen, the Williams boys are old as dirt. Mm. Who do they have at linebacker? Lieber? They have Lieber. They still have Greenway. Greenway. But those guys are getting old. Yeah. So their whole defense needs to be revamped. Oh, yeah, it's in flux right now. Well, yeah, his his he just got picked this high because of his size and his... Uh, Intangible. Yeah. Uh, you know, he showed a lot of speed and a lot of height. Um, so he impressed people with his workouts. Right. And number 30, the 49ers, well, I, had, I had no clue who, where the hell they were going to go. What do you give somebody who has everything yeah, already? Yeah, the 49ers look good. Stack. So I had no clue where they were headed. So they went ahead and picked the wide receiver from Illinois, A.J. Jenkins, who I didn't even know was projected in the first round. This is a, this is another head scratcher. Uh, I feel like I think John Harbaugh knows what he's doing. You know, I give him a lot. Really? 
<laughs> Alex Smith exactly. looking like a decent player. You know, I thought Alex Smith was trash. I'm sorry, I can say it. I thought Alex Smith was trash. He, he mm -hmm. made he made him look.